right, Coach, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up with Ryan Tannehill and the visiting Miami Dolphins. First carry for Kenyon Drake. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Second down, it's Drake. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. We've become so accustomed to it, you, you sort of take it for granted. You really do, but he is so good that every team in his division, every year, is trying to make sure they draft people charged with trying to block J.J. Watt. So far, hasn't been too successful. Here's Tannehill, and incomplete on the deep ball. And third down is a key down in any game you play, and third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. Back deep for the Texans is Tyler Irvin. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Now, the Houston Texans, Charles, three-game win streak. Remember, they started 0-3, now 3-3 three three after that dramatic win with a pick six by Jonathan Joseph over Buffalo. So all of a sudden, things looking up for them. And how about their defense really starting to step up now? Now they've got J.J. Watt back, Whitney Merciless, the addition of Tyron Matthew. They've really come together because Deshaun Watson struggled a little bit in this one. He's been getting hit a lot this season, had to make a lot of plays. This is the third straight win for Houston where Watson has had three or more turnovers. That's unlikely in the NFL, so give their defense a ton of credit. But that pick six by Jonathan Joseph that sealed it, that's a heck of a win for the Houston Texans. So right now, a lot of focus on that O-line and keeping Watson healthy. Best they can do. The hard part is trying to make an O-line better during the season. You have what you have. He's going to have to play throughout the rest of the year knowing what he's dealing with. But he's got to find a way to cut down on the turnovers. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all offseason about our season open opponent. And they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it, <laughs> it would have been, been a different story. long night. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling, and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Hauled in by Anderson, left side. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. From the 50, it's Watson. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, 
He's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. They had a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. On second down, here's Miller. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. And on the stop defensively, Raekwon McMillan. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. From the gun, here's Watson. And he finds his man, Griffin. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. The Texans with a first opportunity now from the red zone. They have a first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Watson. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Out of the gun, Watson. Caught here by Griffin. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Defensively, they better figure something out. Opening drive, he already has four catches. And if you have to figure out how to stop him defensively, that usually means you weaken your defense. That means that now the offense is doing the dictating, and they should have other things open up as well. Down! Green! Throwing on third down, Watson. To the right side, complete to Miller. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And it's now 3-0, Texans. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Fairbairn now, following the made field goal, he'll send this one away. Here comes Grant on the return. And not a bad return here, he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Then the Dolphins getting set to go here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're gonna lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And he hits his target, it's Kenny Stills. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first down, Drake, and he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. 
I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Tannehill hands to Dre. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. And it looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. So now at third and seven, and defensively, it's a dime look. Six DBs. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And it's caught by Parker. Tannehill with a hook up to Parker for the Dolphin first. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 49-yard line. Now Tannehill over the middle, and it's incomplete. Kenny Stills, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And now the ball's out, fumbled near midfield. And the Texans say they have it, they do. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Now it's Watson. He's letting this one go for Fuller. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Houston. Will Fuller, 53 yards. And the Texans are able to show off their quick strike ability. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead grows to 10 0. Fairbairn now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. They'll start the drive with Drake. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. So after the loss of two, here's second and 12 from the 23. Good. Good 80. 
On second down, here's Tannehill. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively, but instead it just brings up fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. This will be fielded at the 17. A big boot that time. 57 yards, the official distance. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. A shotgun snap for Watson. Over the middle, that's caught by Miller. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 10 yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. Watson hands this to Foreman, and the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I enjoyed watching Robert Quinn in pregame warm-ups with you down on the field. Did it surprise you how tall and angular he is? You wouldn't think he'd be able to play against the run that well, would you? But he can, and he showed it right there, didn't he? That's that wrestling background he has. He understands leverage as well as anyone in the game. A big-time wrestler in high school. He didn't lose very often. Three-time heavyweight state champ in South Carolina. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A really good pickup of 28 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Watson now 11 for 11. Perfect in this opening half. It's first and 10. Watson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Coverage that time by Bobby McCain. Defensively, celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now, and that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Now Foreman. He'll get it to the 23-yard line. Pretty good running there, nine yards, sets up a third and one. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down, they hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. Under pressure and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line, Robert Quinn in there to get him for a loss of three, and it'll be fourth down.
And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He hit his first. Now this from 43. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Jakeem Grant now to return. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So now here come the Dolphins. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards. And now it's second down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Drake off the give from Tannehill. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Third and long, it's Tannehill. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. They'll start out on the ground as Lamar Miller fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Second and nine now from the 21. Watson hands to Miller on the draw. Quick move by Miller. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. A first down carry now for Miller. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Four down, four down. Ten, three, nine. They go play action here on first down. It's complete to Fuller. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 
Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Now a first down throw, Watson. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They go back to the ground now with Miller. And a short gain down to about the 33. The tackle that time by William Hayes. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. From the gun on third, Watson. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. A five yard gain and now they're set up first and goal. I know flashy plays, splashy plays as people like to call them, that attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back to back, five yard gains, didn't force the ball downfield, picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Watson now. From the gun, he'll throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. Only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Back to throw, Watson. This will be caught at about the five. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that's going to make this a 16-0 ball game. 
So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. The return man is Grant. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But some, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's going to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Now throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, let's take a step back and look league-wide here, Charles. What contender do you think is in the most trouble through six weeks? I would not have thought Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago, but, boy, very flat performances against KC and Dallas. Yeah, and we expect them to be a dominant team on the defensive side of the ball week in and week out, and Dallas just shredded them in their game on Sunday. But I don't think Jacksonville's in as much trouble as maybe Denver is. Denver's 2-4. and four. Four straight losses, and Kansas City setting a heck of a pace in the AFC West. Vance Joseph, the second-year coach in Denver, many thought he wouldn't return after last year. Got a second opportunity. This isn't helping him. And last but not least, if we're talking about this group of people, how about the Atlanta Falcons? They're also 2-4, and four, but they got a much-needed win against Tampa Bay on Sunday. If we knew they could get their defensive players back, I'd like them a lot more. They've got a tough road ahead of them, but Matt Ryan, he can help equalize things out. Here's Matt Hawk now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at about the 14. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super toe. <tall. laughs> So a decent game, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. Only people celebrating? The guys who just gave up that play. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Here's Watson operating from the gun. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. With that incompletion, let's discuss all the overtime games that we've had so far in the NFL. We've had nine of them, at least one each week. You know, week six, it was Miami and the Bears with the Dolphins getting the win. Yeah, and you know something? That's an NFL record because that record was set week five, an overtime game each of the first five weeks of the season. Now we're adding to the record, and I wouldn't doubt at all that we would get to seven weeks and maybe beyond. It's been a very competitive NFL season. Looking sideline incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you gotta worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. The Texans on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and a mile. Watson going to give this one to Miller. And able to break 
one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Now the Dolphins are going to halt the action here. It's a timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On fourth down, here's the veteran Shane Leckler to punt it away. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. This is taken at the 23. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. It's caught. Stills right side. And he'll be taken down at the four. 46 yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Here's Tannehill now on second down. On the right side open is Gasicki. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Dolphin first down. And there's a nice catch by Mike Gasicki, the rookie out of Penn State. And partner, you saw him when you were covering Big Ten football. He didn't block very many people, but that's not what they asked him to do. They asked him to go downfield and catch the balls we just saw there. Yeah, absolutely right, and he can do it with the best of them. Yeah, and how about him in his high school video? Did you ever see any of that with him dunking basketballs and spiking volleyballs? His athletic ability is off the charts. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Danny Amendola, the man he was trying to get it to. That'll bring up second down. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. 30, 30, hot. Second and 10. Tannehill once more. And over the middle, this is Parker. And now prior to this third and one, we're going to get a timeout here as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Dolphins on third down, just one for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. To the air again, Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Jason Sanders now for the Miami field goal. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. The kick by Sanders is good. And they'll at least get on the board here, still trailing, but 16 to three now. So they do get the three points before they hit halftime. Something to build on, maybe. Yeah, go ahead and raise the banner, right? The wave the flag. That's good. Got points. And now, as you said, they've got something to build on as they get ready for the second half. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21-yard line. And here comes the Texans now. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. 
They begin with a run by Miller. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. On the stop was T.J. McDonald. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, the free safety was there, no gain. So we've come upon halftime here in Houston, and it's the home team, the Texans, leading this one. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown, it's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. And while that play was unsuccessful to start the second half, I'm not sure that you just totally abandon what you do running the football. Maybe you make some adjustments in your run game and do things a little bit differently, but that doesn't necessarily mean you just go to the pass and do nothing else. To throw on second is Watson. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively, you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. Back 22! Back! On third down, Watson. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. They, that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> a loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept that minute by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Well, the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. From the gun on third down, Tannehill. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got him. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Here's Matt Hawk now. He's been terrific so far. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, 
Somehow, ball finds his way back to him. Atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. On second down, here's Watson. Caught here by Griffin. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. Here's a give to Miller. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Tackle made there by Kiko Alonso. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's Watson now on second down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard and you probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. Now Watson, and that is incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And out come the Dolphins now. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to get up here to the 26. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Ready? Play action, it's Tannehill. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. The former number one overall pick, Jadevian Clowney, in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. So after the sack of Tannehill, the Dolphins come up here on a third and long. gun Tannehill and this is going to be incomplete and we're into the second half now and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive looks like they're just totally out of sync whether they're running the ball passing the ball like we saw there I don't know the rhythm seems off here's Matt Hawk now as he'll come on to kick for a six time tonight field it at the 20 so possession goes over here on the punt. And now out comes Houston. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. On first down, Watson. Blitz coming and down he goes. Stephon Anthony.
Anthony. Coming hard on the blitz, he dumps him for a loss of eight. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Out of the gun, Watson. Fuller brings it in over the middle. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. The Texans on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's Watson. And that is incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Here's Shane Leckler now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Draw play. Tannehill gives to Drake. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. But if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. Now if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. They'll try and get the one game going. This is Miller. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. After the loss, here's second and 12 from the 18. Back 22! To throw is Watson. To throw on second down. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. The reception good for seven. It's third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Down. Black 22. Now Watson from the gun on third down. Caught left side, Hopkins. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. 
I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Now a play fake here on first down. Cameron Wake in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. A shotgun snap for Watson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hopkins. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. It'll be a pickup of 15 as that'll lead to third down. Forget height and catch radius. When you run the fade really well, run down the defender, kind of take him a little bit towards the middle of the field, and then fade to the sideline and give your quarterback some space, it can be executed that well, just as we saw. They'll try to run for it with Miller. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Hey, back 22. Watson on first down. It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Fuller. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Watson from the gun, he'll throw. Dumps it complete to Miller. He'll get a couple yards on that one, and that'll lead here to a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. So they need two yards here on third down. Remember, they're already two of two on third down conversions on this drive. Now it's Watson under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 46. Robert Quinn in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Here's Shane Leckler now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Back to throw, Tannehill. And Stills bringing it in. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touched down or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. On first and 10, Tannehill. Over the middle, complete. It's Parker. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. On second down, here's Tannehill. He goes underneath to Drake. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. 
So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Tannehill now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Tannehill. And avoids the contact by sliding. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. To throw on second down is Tannehill. And his throw here is incomplete. Devontae Parker, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. The Dolphins on third down, a pretty anemic, a very anemic, one for nine thus far. Here it's third and three. Now Tannehill, he's going to float this one. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Mike Gesicki, 44 yards. And the Dolphins able to get this back within a touchdown. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Sanders now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. They've been asleep for a little while on this side of the football, Charles, and the score is just a one-score game now. Haven't had any points this half. What gives? Let's go old school here. All right, let's get back to the basics. Get back to running the football. High percentage throws. Find the guys that eat pressure and make plays for you and make sure they touch it. A run by Foreman to start the drive. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave him with still about eight or nine to go on third down. Watson now, operating from the gun. And that's caught inside the 35. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. The chalk that one up is a gain of 34 on third down. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make the play on the football. They go play action here on first down. Underneath for Miller. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. 
A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Watson looks to throw again. Hopkins on the grab over the middle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That'll put him close to 100 yards receiving. He's at 98, and he's got a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now Miller, he's had a big workload here tonight. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Andre Branch in on the stop. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. They'll run it again with Miller. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, bled a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Here comes Grant on the return. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. And the Dolphins getting set to go here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. From the gun, here's Tannehill. He's going to air it out deep for it. And got his man complete. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. And that goes for a gain of 31. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And he's going to go down. The 
Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. The four-time All-Pro, J.J. Watt. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. beyond the 40 before he's taken down. And a nice gain of 21 yards. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And he hits Drake. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. From the 50, it's Tannehill. Oh, I can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted, and if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Here we go, it's Gore. And he's not gonna get the first. I don't even think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. Frank Gore's converted these his entire career, but not there. And it'll be a turnover on downs. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Now a handoff to Miller. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Decent start defensively to this series. They've got to stop them here and get this ball back. I like the way you phrase that, partner. Decent start. But now it's got to be more about the ball. It's all about the ball, getting it away from them, because making good tackles is one thing, but the clock will run out on you. You've got to have the football back for your offense. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. Hey, 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 down! Move hey. On second down, here's Watson. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 154 left as they call the timeout defensively. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. They'll run with Miller. And he'll go down, shy of the 40 at the 41. Now the Dolphins are going to take another timeout here. 
as he'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. The 20. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Down. Now a 20th carry of the game for Lamar Miller. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. Saw so through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. And Watson's going to throw it here. His pass caught at the four. And he's brought down. It'll go as a gain of 12. And that should just about wrap this one up. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook. But oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.